Hello everybody and welcome to Girl Tries Games. We're playing Siberia. In the last video, we um, kind of explored the... I guess, well, f the first video you should watch because it had a lot of information about um, the history of what we're doing here. I don't even know if I could really sum it up in a quick summary, so I'd just recommend going back and watching the first couple videos. Um, this is an adventure point and click game, so it's just like collecting a bunch of information as you go. So what we need to do right now is to help this guy Oscar um, get some feet. He's missing feet, and in order to do his job, which is be an engineer of a train, he needs his feet. So he gave us a punch card to go to the production line and create feet for him. So let's go do that. Alright, let's check out this battery thing we put here. <sighs> That's really heavy. I've got to get some help. Alright, maybe this forklift can help. How did he know what to do? Oh, Kate disappeared. Alright, he like plugged it in. Okay, cool. So he did all the work for us. So now, in order to use the production line, we have to go up to the controls that we found earlier from the last video. So that's upstairs. And they're over here, up these stairs. It's afraid to run up and down stairs, by the way. <laughs> okay. Alright, so... We see there's a slot here that we could put something in. So let's get Oscar's um, punch card he gave us and stick it all in. Because that'll give the um, directions of what to do. So, we saw earlier, but from the last video, when we played with these switches, only this one works. So let's turn that one on. And let's choose... I don't know if it really matters. Let's choose something nice, like that. And see if that'll do anything. Alright, they're making something. Let's see if that's right. Run, Kate, run! So yeah, this is Kate Walker. She's a business lawyer. And she's trying to finalize a sale of this company, this manufacturing company that we're in. However, we have discovered that there is an heir. I don't know if these are right. Because when I did this the first time, I kind of did it by accident. <laughs> so, um, like I said, I started the game, but I never finished it. I just got, like, a little ways in. And so I don't, this part I did by accident, so I don't really know what's the right way to do it. But let's go find out. We got feet for him. Let's go find if they're the right kind of feet. Alright, let's get those feet. 
and give them to him and see if they're good enough. Here are your feet, Oscar. I hope I haven't made a mistake. These feet are incorrect, Oh, Kate great. Walker. How did I know? Alright, so what was wrong about it was definitely that material. Remember I said, let's figure out what to make it out of? I think I must have just gotten lucky last time I did it. Um, so I can't really remember which ones were the right ones. But let's go back and try again. Back up to the controls. Okay, so it's definitely not that. That looks nice. Maybe we should get this nice, smooth looking one. Uh, let's see if that does the job. Somehow I don't think so. Because I remember a different cutscene. <laughs> so I don't think those are right. I wonder if we could just try again. How about this one? Nope, we can't. Okay. So we gotta go down, get the legs. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to know which wood to make, though. I don't know if it's just supposed to be trial and error, or if I'm missing some sort of clue that tells us which wood to use. All right, Kate, go. Go grab them, get them out of the way so that we can make new ones. I wonder if we could just go up and make new ones knowing that they're wrong, or if we have to... I think we probably have to have him tell us they're wrong. <laughs> Oops. Let's see. Go in, Kate, go in. Okay, um, Oscar, are these okay? Here are your feet, Oscar. I hope I haven't made a mistake. These feet are incorrect, Kate Walker. Okay. So, we knew that already, basically, because I, I just remembered a different um, clip when I did it the first time last time. I must have just gotten lucky. Unfortunately, I don't remember what it was. Alright, let's go up to the control panel again and try again. Alright, let's see. Um, let's try that one. Hopefully that one's right. Yep, different cutscene. And the scary crane bird hand thing has to get the special wood to create Oscar's fabulous legs.
And there we have the correct legs. I keep trying to use WASD to move her and it doesn't work in this game, I keep forgetting. <coughs> Alright, so Oscar... Oops, we gotta go get the legs first. <laughs> if you can't tell, we're getting close to the point where I don't know what to do. Closer and closer. Alright, we got the legs. Let's go give them to our buddy boy. So yeah, the aggravating thing about this game is how long it takes her to cross through all these different screens. <laughs> Luckily though, we have the option for her to run, which is nice. Alright Oscar, we got your correct legs this time. Here are your feet, Oscar. I hope they fit. Kate Walker! I see you managed to produce two XZ2005 underscore B models. Good. Stick those feet in there. Booyah! Thumbs up. We got a thumbs up from the Oscar man. Allow me to express a real feeling of joy, Kate Walker. They really suit you. Comfy? Very. You are very kind, Kate Walker. I am sorry to have to leave you. Where are you going? I must find my train. Its departure is imminent. Alright, so we know that he was built to be a conductor of Hans's locomotive that he sent plans for. So he's off to do his duty. Duty. <laughs> Alright, and there he goes. So let's see if we can follow him. Let's go to the train station where he's probably headed. Alright, we're leaving the factory to go to the train station. To see if we could hitch a ride with Oscar, because. That's the best clue we have to go on at this point. We're looking for Hans, and we know Hans sent Anna the plans to build this locomotive and Oscar himself. So if this train's going somewhere, let's hope that it takes us to Hans. All right, so the train station is up on this um, top right corner walkway. So let's head on over to the train station. Alright, in we go, Valadolin train station. Alright, let's see if we can find Oscar in the train since there's no one in the ticket booth. Oscar. Hey there, Oscar. My functions do not permit me familiarity, Kate Walker. Even if you are my first and only passenger. Me? Your passenger? Yes, you, Kate Walker. Is it not for that reason you completed my production process? If you say so. Alright, let's ask him. I... About... The ride. I have decided to come along for the ride, Oscar. Ready when you are. Your ticket, please? My ticket? What are you talking about? The rules clearly state, Kate Walker, 
Every passenger of this train must possess a ticket. Okay. And where <laughs> do I get hold of a ticket? Only the ticket vendor may issue tickets. You are in luck. The ticket office must be open now. You should go there immediately. Alright. So we gotta go to the ticket office that we just passed by. Let's do that and buy a ticket. And there's Oscar standing in the ticket booth. How convenient. But it's you? What can I do for you, madam? <laughs> but Oscar, it's me, Kate Walker. Correct. Your name is indeed Kate Walker. All right, so let's buy a ticket. What can I do for you, Kate Walker? A train ticket, please. Why, do you sell anything else? <laughs> the only function of this ticket office is to issue tickets. You are requested to accelerate operations. The office closes in exactly three minutes. What can I do for you? A ticket, please. Duh, Oscar. One ticket? Yes. One ticket. What is your final destination? I don't know. It's you who told me I had to get a ticket. A ticket to travel, then? Yes, that's exactly where I want to go. To travel. <laughs> that's a big-ass ticket. All right, so here's our ticket on this fancy locomotive that Hans sent to Anna that he invented. And here is authorization for access. There you are. Do not lose it. This office is not entitled to produce duplicates. This advice also applies to the accompanying documentation. Okay. What's that? The authorization for the release of the train. The ticket officer may ask you for it at any time. But I mean, you are the... Attention! The exact moment has arrived to close this office. <laughs> All right. Ticket booth is closed. All right, so let's get back on the train and give him our ticket. <clears throat> All right, Oscar. Here is our ticket. There you are, Oscar. Does this mean we can leave now? I cannot accept this ticket for the moment, Kate Walker. Keep it. Why don't you want to take my ticket? I must abide by regulations, Kate Walker. Not all departure conditions have been fulfilled. I must confirm your departure release. You can be a real stickler for the rules, Oscar, my old fellow. <laughs> Alright, so he wants the departure release, which might be this other paper he gave us at the ticket booth. So let's give that to him. Here, this is the authorization for the release of the train. It has not been signed, Kate Walker. <laughs> Oscar, you're you going are too infuriating. Far. You just gave me this. Does the train belong to you, Kate Walker? No. So there. This train cannot leave Aladdin without the agreement of its owner. I don't think Madame Varlberg is in a position to sign anything right now. In that case, the stamp of her legal representative is perfectly sufficient. Please hurry up, Kate Walker. This train will soon depart, and I must ensure it is not delayed. All right, so we know that Anna Varlberg's legal representative is the notary. So let's head back to the notary's house, where we can get our permit approved without even having to wake him up. And if you remember how we could do that, we saw a stamp on his desk. So let's run back to the notary. Run! Alright, so leaving the train station. Hopefully Oscar won't leave without his one and only passenger. <clears throat> the 
The scenery here is beautiful, but I don't feel like there's a need for so many in-between walking shots, you know? It just makes it last longer. Kind of reminds me of The Longest Journey, the first one, where it's like cool little scenes, but she takes forever to walk across it. But I, like I said earlier, I'm very grateful that they allow her to run, which I don't think they did in The Longest Journey, if I remember correctly, but that was a long time ago. All right, into the notary's house. Okay, and let's check out his desk. Whoop. So we saw this earlier when we came in here. We don't even need to wake him up. He has an approved stamp machine automaton here. So we need to put our permit that we want signed onto this little desktop. And we could try to click it, but it doesn't work. And that's because he's out of ink, which we also found in Anna's desk. We found an ink bottle. So now it should work. Approve. Perfect. All right, so let's head back to Oscar and hope this is good enough for him. Oh, Oscar, you stickler for the rules. But you know, someone's got to do it. Even though this is forged, <laughs> the notary didn't actually approve anything. He was asleep the whole time. This Kate Walker is a lawyer. She should know that she is doing illegal things. Like breaking and entering, forging documents, things like that. Also, I love how Kate is just willing to leave without her suitcase. When she doesn't even know where she's going. <laughs> Up the stairs you go, Kate Walker. <clears throat> All right. This better be good enough for you, Oscar. We also have learned that Kate is a pretty prissy woman. She didn't want to carry her own suitcase. She didn't want to get dirty in the mud. She didn't want to walk through very shallow water. <laughs> she didn't want to touch a dirty oar. This is your stupid train release ratification, Oscar. Thank you, Kate Walker. That is perfect. Awesome, okay. So now let's give him the ticket. There you are, Oscar. Does this mean we can leave now? No, nope, of course not. I cannot accept this ticket not. for the moment, Kate Walker. Keep it. I don't understand why we can't leave. I'd hate to think it's me that's delaying the train like this. I do not wish to appear impolite, Kate Walker, but I am afraid that not all departure conditions have been fulfilled. If that's a joke, Oscar, it's not very funny. I really need to find Hans Varlberg as quickly as possible. I have strict instructions to obey. There are three spaces in the luggage compartment that are designed to accommodate two very important objects. The train can only depart when they are in place. Please excuse me now. I must return to my departure preparations. Oh, okay. I wouldn't want to break any rules. So he said there are Space is in the luggage compartment, so let's head to the luggage compartment, which is this way. It's kind of hard to tell that you can walk that way further. All right, so here you can see there's like a pedestal. That's These shelves circular. look as if they're made from valuable objects. Valuable objects. Let's look at this one. So see, it's just shelves for stuff. So 
The way that I figured this out was her hint about this looks like a place for valuable objects. So we know that Hans made the designs for this train and he made the um, rules for how it should run. And so what would be valuable to Hans? Let's look in our inventory. Pretty much all of these things we have here would be valuable to Hans. So this mechanical toy goes where it would fit, right here. It would fit on the circular pedestal. Alright. Next, the music cylinder would fit in these little um, spots here on the shelves. Okay. And lastly, his precious mammoth toy doll that made him become obsessed with mammoths, that he's been asking for Anna to bring to him after 60-something years. He's obsessed with it. That is the most valuable thing, and it goes over here. See what's in this room. I forgot to check this one last time. Oh look, our suitcase is conveniently no on the point train. Weighing myself down. All right, let's ask Oscar if that's good enough for him. It's me again, Oscar. Oops, I Hello, forgot Kate I have to Walker. give him the ticket. Don't think for one moment that I'm bored of you, Oscar. But I have to go. I also have much to attend to, Kate Walker. All right, we have to hand him the ticket and see if the conditions are good enough to travel. There you are, Oscar. Does this mean we can leave now? I cannot accept this ticket for the moment, Kate Walker. Keep it. I don't understand why you're still refusing to take this ticket. Everything is in order, and... An engineer prides himself. On punctuality. Yes, Oscar, I remember. But what now? But what's up, Oscar? <laughs> Why haven't you returned to your engine room? If I may be so bold as to express a personal opinion on this matter, Kate Walker? I'm all ears, Oscar. I fear we have omitted to wind up the locomotive springs. Is that all? Then let's do it for Christ's sake. I'm afraid I have no notion of how to implement this function, Kate Walker. It would seem that the makeshift completion of my production process is responsible for a lack of instruction on this matter. <laughs> okay, right. I'll <coughs> see to that myself then. I mean, a wind-up train can't be that complicated. You, wait there. I won't be long. All right, Thank so you, we Kate still Walker. have to wind up this train. So remember like it was it was built by Hans, which means it's all clockwork. So to wind up the train, we have to go off to this side. The back, the other side of the platform. Alright, and then we'll go this way. Alright, so here we have a little crank lever. Let's check it out. Alright, don't know what that lever did. Let's crank it. Okay, so that brings out a little key thing. Now let's try the lever. It opens a spot where the key can go in. And winds it. Alright, I think we're good. Let's close it back up. We have wound the locomotive. It should be ready to go now, according to Oscar's standards. <laughs> Let's go ask him. That whistling is coming from a janitor. He's sweeping on the other end of the platform. He won't talk to us. I've tried. Phone call. Kate, it's me again. Dan, I was going to call you. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are you yeah. mad at me? I've just called Martha and Lorma. They told me you weren't expected to return this week. Oh, yeah. So when are you coming home? I don't know. There's nothing I can do about it. The situation is kind of tricky, you know. At the beginning of next week, I hope. Yeah, whenever. Dan, please. Oh, he just, just hang the... in there, okay? The stakes are higher than I thought, and you know how much I love this job. I suppose it's neither here nor anywhere to you that the Goldbergs are going to. It is. I mean, it isn't. I mean, Dan, this really isn't the moment. You know I'm thinking about you. I love you, sweetheart, and I'll give you a call when I have some news. Promise. I've got to go now. I've got kind of a, a train to catch. A train? Where are you off to now? This is crazy, Kate. To tell you the truth, I've no idea. Love you, honey. You know that. Kate! She's a little cold. He, like, needs her, and she's just like, Sorry, I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> all right, Oscar. This better be the last thing you need from us. You could have told us all of this at one sitting, but no. Right. Everything is in order, then. The train is finally ready to leave. I am most terribly embarrassed. Such ignorance on my part is inadmissible. Hmm. I hope you still have confidence in my abilities, Kate Walker. Well, we don't have much Please of a choice. return to your seat and we can leave. <sighs> finally. Alright, Kate's just getting on the train to who knows where. Without worrying about it. Gotta say, she's a bra either a brave or a stupid woman. <laughs> I don't think I'd ever get on a train to a place that I don't know. And there goes the beautiful locomotive that Hans designed. Has that bed in the other room, but she's sleeping in a chair like a weirdo. I mean, I guess she's prissy, but not that prissy. Otherwise, she would have slept in the bed. <laughs> and we're coming to a stop in a greenhouse. All right, so let's get off the train. Hi, Oscar. Where are we, Oscar? At the halls of residence of Bahochstadt University. And do we really have to stop here? The situation is incompatible with the pursuit of our journey. What are you waiting for, then? Wind them up. Find a way. There must be some sort of train winding thing just laying around in this weirdo station. Weirdo I have seen station. nothing that fits that description, Kate Walker. I guess we'd better find out, then. I do not like this station. The atmospheric humidity is detrimental to my sophisticated wheel workings. I will wait for you inside the train. <sighs> wimp. <laughs> You're one to call someone a wimp, Kate. Alright, let's ask him more. Oscar, we have a serious problem. How can we carry on our journey if this train doesn't want to budge? What are our options? Every clock has its key, Kate Walker. Keep looking. Well, I hope you're right. I'm gonna go see what I can find. All right, so every clock has its key. Oscar, I think that Hans Vorlberg once stayed in this town after he left Valady Len. Maybe this wasn't a chance stopover after all. Nothing is left a chance in a railroad network. You agree with me then? We have no concrete proof to support your hypothesis. The train stopped because the clockwork mechanism is unwound. That is the only concrete evidence we have, Kate Walker. I was just hoping for a little imagination on your part, Oscar. No, Kate Walker. 
I am only an automaton, Kate Walker. So, um, it is pretty this convenient. This train might be a wonder of technology, but the engine's limited autonomy is a liability. You got to admit that. I am yeah. afraid I refuse to entertain this consideration, <laughs> Kate Walker. So, it's a little bit of Oscar. A See you later, convenient. In a while, Kate or it's a little Walker. too convenient to be a coincidence that the train unwound precisely at this train station and not like in the middle of nowhere. So, let's get off this way and take a look at what's around. See if we can find a um, key to wind the train some more to go further. Let's see what's up at this ladder. <gasps> oh, she's afraid of these birds and they won't run away from her. <gasps> Alright, so she can't climb up the ladder because she's afraid of birds. Wimp. <laughs> See what's over here in the little garden area. This reminds me of Batman, like Poison Ivy's little greenhouse in the cartoon. <laughs> All right, what's over here? Oh, I forgot to mention that now we're at the point where I don't know what's going on. I mean, I did arrive here in my last game, and then I stopped playing so that I could start recording this. So, I'm not quite sure what to do in this place. So now it's blind. Welcome to the blind walkthrough. Okay, it looks like we can't go further that way, so let's cross the tracks. Go over the bridge. Okay, uh, let's go this way. Oh, uh, hello. Hello. You're on my train, I see. Yes, I've come from Valadilen. It's been a long time since I've seen a train here. Students, did you bring students with you? No, I traveled alone. Well, almost alone. I remember around the start of fall, trains would bring kids from all around the world here. They study zoology and botany, paleontology, and all that stuff. This was a great university. And it isn't still great today, then? Today. Huh. Okay, that didn't give us much explanation. Let's tell him about ourselves. Have you been the station master of Baruchstadt for a long time? Or okay, I've never himself. had another job. Now you tell me, are you in charge of this train? No, I mean, I'm not sure. <laughs> so what you're doing sure. here? You come here to do some bookworming over at the university? Well, sort of. I'm always looking for new information. Hmm. Well, you don't seem to know a lot. And about that train, it's going to get in the way if you leave it there, that's for sure. In fact, I'm a lawyer and I'm conducting a pretty unusual investigation. Investigation, huh? Uh, hey, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm just a station master. I, I don't know too much about anything. Hmm. Well, you never know. Anybody seems a little be bit sketchy. In this case. See, uh, nobody actually tells me anything, so my hands are totally clean. I never implied they weren't. Okay, he seems all worried. Uh, let's ask him about our mission. You don't know where I might find equipment to wind up my train springs, do you? Well, not in this station, that's for sure. And I would know. You might want to try near the wall. So, you know, near the wall. Are you staying for long, miss? Uh, no. I mean, I don't know, actually. One or two days tops. You see, I've got to wind my train back up so that I can continue my journey. It just... Uh, if you stay here too long, I might get in trouble. The train should stop, then leave again. That's the rule. Besides, your machine's disturbing the birds. Maybe you could take me up to this wall? If there were two of us, we could find what I need to wind up my train even quicker. 
Uh, miss, forgive me, I, I gotta stick to the rules. You know, I have to man the station. I don't want to get into trouble with my superiors at the university. Uh, you understand? All right, so he said we should check the wall. Um, and he also said we need to leave. <laughs> I feel like I've help lost me. my way a little here. I could really do with your help. Hey, anything I can do, miss, you just let me know. Uh, yeah, you can help me walk to the wall. The Let's name Hans, Hans Wahlberg doesn't mean anything to you by chance, does it? Oh, do you really think I'd remember one little name from the thousands that passed through this station? Okay. Let's ask about our train. I'm sorry to junk up your station like this, but the spring mechanism on my train needs winding. A spring-operated locomotive? Uh, there's a thing. Yeah, and an impractical thing, too. Now yeah, I dream to But pretty train. cool. <laughs> now, I'm over the hill. <clears throat> and someone has to take care of the birds, after all. So he's very concerned about the birds. Let's ask about them. All these birds in a station. It's amazing. This is no ordinary station, miss. Oh, no. These birds are part of the prestigious University of Baruchstadt Ornithological Collection. Over the years, this aviary has housed some of the most fantastic species from all over the world. And I am not exactly your typical station master either. This little world is my responsibility, and that is no easy task. I can well believe you. And you know what's the hardest? The hardest thing is to keep interspecial harmony. And one day some explorer introduced a couple of cuckoos from the Amazon. Whoa. It wasn't a good idea? A nightmare. You know, cuckoos lay their eggs in the nests of other species, right? Now, what's more, they also push the host's eggs out of the nest so that they receive all the mother's attention, right? A cursed cuckoos. Nightmare. I see what you mean. That's one tricky bird. And there was nothing you could do to stop it? The faculty declared the bird a protected species. If it wasn't for our mechanical eagle, we were sitting on a major mechanical ornithological eagle. catastrophe. You have an automaton here? A wonder of technology. It's an eagle that's mounted on rails in the air. It passes through and it swoops down to collect parasite eggs. But heck, the dang eagle's been out of order for several years. Impossible to collect the eggs myself. Why not? I, uh, I can't climb up the gangway. I fell off it several months back and I still have a pain in my spine. Not to mention the vertigo I've been getting. I only, only have to look up in the air. Whoa. <laughs> you poor soul. That must be very hard. The worst thing is, cuckoo eggs piling up in the nests. Soon the rectors are gonna notice. There's trouble in store. Big trouble. I'm worried. Yep. Worried. All right. So I he basically told us the that this train station Welcome serves as an stuff, aviary. Guys. And um, the cuckoos are kind of, the cuckoo birds are kind of running amok and taking over the other species. Um, and it used to be okay because there was an eagle automaton around, but uh, it doesn't work and he can't climb up anymore. So he's worried that the directors of the school are going to be, um, oh, there's something here. That the directors of the school are going to be pissed. All right, what is this that we found? A hook. All right, we've got a little hook. All right, let's go back. All right, let's go this way, see what's over here. This looks like the front doors. Let's go see if we can Check it out. Baroque start. Is it locked? Are you not gonna do it? <laughs> nope. No point. It is locked. locked. Alright, let's try going this way. Another door, maybe that one will be open.
No nope. point. It's locked. Okay, let's go the other way. There might be a door over there. Come on, Kate. Figure it out. No point. It's locked. Hmm. Okay. What's this? I don't know what that says. <laughs> Looks maybe German. That looks broken. Okay, that's broken. Looks like a phone. And maybe we need I some need coins. Key. Oh, a key. To open it. Alright. Um let's see what's over here. Can we go over here? Is this little walkway something we can walk on? No. Alright. Then let's go back up the bridge and go the one only other direction we haven't tried yet. Go, Kate, go. And that's this way. There's our train. There's a cuckoo. Is she gonna be too afraid to walk by it? Nope. It'll fly away this time. Oh, look. There's an exit out here. I guess there would have to be for the trains to come out. And we are outside. And we can see over here some mammoths. The theme of this game is m being obsessed with mammoths. Maybe Hans was really drawn to this place because of the mammoths or something? I don't know. Um, that might be the university or like a natural history museum or something. I don't know, the only time I ever see mammoths is in a natural history museum, so that's the first thing that comes to my mind. This place looks pretty deserted. The buildings are kind of falling apart. Keep going, Kate. That thing looks like the winding machine I used in the Valadilen station. I've got to find a way of getting the train up here. Okay, so if she's talking about that windmill, I don't know if that's what she means. That might be able to wind the train. I don't know. Um, this might be the wall that the guy was talking about. Looks like a pretty big wall to me. And it looks like it's closed, so maybe even if we do get the train running again, I don't know if, how we'll be able to pass through the wall. We'll have to figure that out. Yeah, I don't know if that's a windmill or what. Alright, there's not really anything to see over here. Head back. Let's see if we missed something. Because I don't think there's anything we could do yet. <clears throat> Unless we go back and try to push the train over here or something. <laughs> Maybe we could ask Oscar for help. Or that station master guy. We have to talk inside. Hmm. 
What do you want, Oscar? Maybe he has an idea. Yes, Oscar? What is it? A message has arrived for you. Oh. A message? You have been summoned to see the Rectors. They are the highest authority at the University. They want to talk to you. Talk to me? Yes, to the person responsible for the train. So, I'm in charge now. Sure, okay. okay. But why would these gentlemen <laughs> want to see me at all? They do not say why, just that it's very important. Okay, so the rectors, the directors of the school want to talk to us. Um, so maybe that means we can exit now and go towards the school. Which I'm assuming is where the mammoths are. Let's try those doors again. Maybe they didn't leave us trapped in here when they came to tell Oscar that they want to meet me. And yep, the door is open. Convenient. All right, Kate, go. Okay, so I wonder... Let's see what's over here. I like to explore before I, like, go where I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to go. Like, I'm pretty sure this stairway leads to those mammoths we saw. Um, which... I'm guessing is the entrance to the school. So let's go over here first. Oh look, there's like a dock. Let's talk to these folks. Hey there, on the boat. Guten Tag, schöne Mademoiselle. My husband say, hello young lady, you want to talk to us? <laughs> yes. Are you from Barrackstadt? Yet. So you're like me. Birds just passing through. I'm stuck here because of my train. Kleine Puskereisen mit uns, no? What did he say? Train kaput. No luck for you. <laughs> Thanks. I have a little problem with my train. It's kind of broken. I've absolutely got to get it out of the station. Do you think you could tow it over to the wall with your barge? Lock closed. Barge block. But if the locks were open, would it be okay to tow my train then? Por que no? More money for that work. Da, it's possible. My husband say we help you if you give money. Yeah. Right. And how much do you want? Chiquante. He want one hundred fifty dollars. What language is he speaking? One hundred and fifty dollars. I don't have that much. He's like speaking no a money, mix of no German and Italian. Let me offer you seventy-five. Nine, one twenty-five dollar. Out of the question. One hundred dollars and not a dime more. Correct. You have barge for one hundred dollar. Great. Now don't move. I'll be back as quick as possible with the money. All right. So they're willing to help for a hundred dollars. You must really get to see the countryside. Do you know New York at all? We not understand. I'm looking for a funny little man who is supposed to live in Siberia. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Siberia. I expect you've already been there. Shivraga come to Siberia. Siberia. No. Too cold. Barge no break ice. Okay, let's ask about the train. I hope my train isn't too big for your barge. It's okay. Motor boat is the class. My husband say correct. Powerful motor. I mean, we're not exactly very far from the winding machine, are we? It's dumb, isn't it? All this effort to go a few yards. Put train in barge? Nee, not possible. All right, let's ask them about the birds. Have you gone down to take a look around the station yet? It's amazing. You know, it's full of exotic birds. Me to my gear? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. We no leave boat. Husband is land sick. <laughs> okay, let's ask about the it's money. It's not very polite of you to take advantage of my predicament. We could have done favors for each other, 
for free. Out of solidarity. Father, father, I lost speak not full. Maria, wake full. Excuse me? My husband say need money for leave. One hundred dollar not lot for fancy lady like you. <laughs> How would you know a fancy lady like me, really? Okay, stop getting them mad before they I refuse. won't disturb you again. Dos vidanya. Isn't that Russian? Does Russian sound like a mix of German and Italian? Was I just not doing it right or thinking about it right? I mean, I have to admit, I don't know what Russian sounds like very much, so I could have just been on crack. <laughs> um, Alright, it looks like the only other place to go is up the stairs, so let's go. And here are the mammoths. All right, let's check this thing out. And there's some saber-toothed tiger statues too. This kind of looks like a, an automaton thing up here. You could see little automaton-y guys. Oh, look, we can inspect this little door. Ah, oh, this thing's jammed. Looks like it has to be balanced. Like we need to, to put another little like golden egg on this side or something to open it up. Oh, this thing's jammed. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind. Oh, there's a guy over there. Let's go talk to him. Hi, dude. Hello. Hey, baby, you party? You sure looking mighty fine. <laughs> I love those big round eyes. <laughs> Just who do you think you are? Hey, Spunky. I'd like that in a lady. Okay, I'm hooked. Come on, Zol. I'll let you buy me that coffee. <laughs> I don't remember ever asking. Hey, don't play hard to get. I know you like it big time. Yeah. Listen, Stop kid. It. Go back home and play with your toy cars and forget you ever saw me. <laughs> Hello. Hey, you do baby, it again. You oh. Just who do you okay. think? Hey, whatever, whatever, hey. whatever. Listen. Over it. Okay. I thought he'd say something different, but no, he has the same shtick. All right, let's go in. Cause you know that's what college kids are like. <laughs> hey, baby, you party. I love your big round eyes. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like we could go to the right, to the left. Can we go up those stairs? Let's go check out this mammoth. I guess we can go up this, these stairs, okay. Um, let's see, which way should we go first? Um... Let's go to the left first. Let's check out this door. A library. Guy. Excuse me. <clears throat> Can I disturb you a second? No. You could be a little <laughs> bit nicer about it. Keep quiet. In case you haven't noticed, we're somewhere that requires silence and tranquility. All right. He doesn't want to talk. Oh, there's something here on the table. What is it? Stick it in your shirt. Amazon. Memories of an expedition. Oh, so that's the bird that was in the um, train station. 
the red Amazon cuckoo. The subspecies of the common Cuculus canarus, it's hard to read this font, is endemic in the Amazon forest and is one of the region's most brightly colored species. The male's plumage is a bright vermilion, while the female's is a little more russet and neutral. Habitat and food. The red cuckoo inhabits the more isolated and denser areas of the Amazon forest. It is reliant on the thick upper foliage of the rainforest to live its lonely existence. The explorer may nevertheless have an excellent view of the bird when the animal ventures to lower branches in search of forest sauvignon grapes. The wild vines provide the bird with the majority of its food. The cuckoo is particularly partial to its juicy fruit. The red cuckoo may sometimes gorge itself on this fruit to the point of drunkenness, rendering it an easy prey for any jungle predator. Eat and be eaten, such is the impeccable, implacable law of nature. Reproduction. Like other species of cuckoo, the red Amazon cuckoo delegates the task of raising its young to other birds. This parasitic behavior enables the species to reproduce prolifically and with, the, with minimum effort. The female cuckoo scouts its territory on the, on the lookout for nests under construction. She chooses the moment when its owners are absent to lay her eggs, generally in the afternoon. The host, meanwhile, will lay mainly in the morning. After laying an egg in her selected nest, the female will remove one of the host's eggs and destroy it or eat it later. The cuckoo's egg generally hatches before the eggs of its adopted brothers and sisters. The cuckoo chick will instinctively edge the other eggs from the nest. That's fucked up. <laughs> the young cuckoo grows fast. Sometimes its foster parents will perch on the back of the hungry chick to feed it. Even if the cuckoo's egg is very different to the smaller host eggs, it nevertheless mimics the host egg in certain ways. Not perfectly, but just enough to be accepted by most species. The future. The red cuckoo's love of the grape could sadly prove fatal for the species in the medium term. European settlers who have tried to cultivate the grape on the Amazonian alluvial plains have decimated the Amazon red cuckoo population. Grape producers, to protect their harvests from what they would call inveterate looting, have declared all-out war on the bird. It is to be feared that the cuckoo will be on the losing side. The red cuckoo reproduces relatively well in captivity, and is one of the jewels in the crown of the Barakstadt University ornithological collections. However, scientists at the university have their own reservations about the species, and its propensity to become practically invasive whenever conditions are favorable to it, to the detriment of other rarer species. Heads of the Barakstadt aviary have therefore undertaken a policy of birth control to attempt to balance out the nature out nature's imperfections in this artificial environment. The Forest Sauvignon Grape Today it is very rare to find the Forest Sauvignon Grape in the wild. The species has been decimated by a terrible equatorial phylloxera e epidemic. However, in Europe, successful cultivation of the plant is the pride of the Barakstadt University botany collection and has largely contributed to the survival of the species around the world. All right, so that's ba that's the information that the station master guy kind of told us about. He didn't tell us about the grapes, but he told us about the parasitic nature of the cuckoo. I don't know if that's real. Is that real? Are cuckoos really like that? I had no idea. Let's go this way. Let's see if we could go up the ladder. We can. Um, oh, here's one we could take. The Illustrated Dictionary of Plants and Mushrooms. Um, all right, I'll try to read this with this terrible font. <laughs> the Yangala Cola. The Yangala cola is a mushroom without stem that has a chewy texture. It is a member of the polypore family and grows exclusively on the trunks of certain trees of the Amazonian jungle. While it is edible when young, the Yangala cola has a woody texture 
and inspire or insipid flavor and offers no great culinary appeal. Native Amazonian tribes, however, are very attached to the mushroom. Why are they why they are so fond of the fungus has taken extensive scientific research to elucidate. Biologists have searched the conclusion have reached the conclusion that the Yangala cola contains a special substance that is unique to the mushroom. The substance significantly affects vision and enhances its acuteness enorm- enormously. Amazonian Indian hunters discovered this effect and started using it centuries ago. The Yangala cola is dried and ground to a powder and consumed before hunt commences. Its effect is instantaneous and the penetration of the hunter's vision increases extraordinarily. The hunter is then able to aim and hit targets concealed behind thick undergrowth even over great distances. Alright, so there's a... Amazonian mushroom that enhances your abilities, I guess. Okay, I wonder why that will be important. I'm sure we'll find out soon. Is there anything on this side? Mm, I don't see my cursor change. And that's the other wall we were at, so I don't think so. All right, let's get out of this library. All right, so we could continue going left, or we could try to go to the other place. Let's go look on the other wall first. Let's go over here, see what's over here before we continue further. I just... Oh, there's another door. Uh, maybe we should just go... Oh, let's just keep going down one way so we don't get lost. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so we'll keep going down this hallway and then after that we'll come back to the other hallway. And there's another door. Let's check it out. like she's running and she gets scared of the stairs so she has to stop oh hello mr. men are you the rectors look at their little hats. good day to you gentlemen tell me young lady to what do we owe this pleasure please do be brief we do not have very much time on our hands as rectors of this university we have serious matters to attend to and our time is precious. Well, sorry. I have heard you wish to meet the owner of the train that is currently in your station. May I know the reason for your summons? We are surprised that your train has not yet left, miss. The situation is most regrettable. Tell me about it. The rules do clearly state that trains are meant to come and go and not remain stationary at a platform. Train should first stop, then subsequently leave. That is the rule. All right. We agree then, dear colleagues, that what we're dealing with is deviant behavior. Hey. This matter really <laughs> is cause for concern. It's a clockwork train, you see? So it needs winding up again? Unfortunately, there is no equipment in the station to do this. A clockwork train? That's strange. How very quaint. You mean it's some sort of mechanical toy? You are causing a hindrance to us, miss. I am Why? very it's hopeful like that I will find what I need the along the wall. The wall? Ooh, uh, miss, seems scared that of the wall. really is not a suitable place for you to go. We're Especially shocked. Especially for a young lady. You see, miss, we freely admit that every day we praise the existence of that particular edifice. We owe the integrity of our dear university and the fine education it provides to the wall. Hmm. It protects us from harm and invasion from the unknown. May okay. God protect us from what is beyond those ramparts, miss. Please believe me. I don't have any choice. I must continue my journey. Uh, such a decision is a correct one since it's in line with regulations. Yes. Thus, so your train will indeed <laughs> be able to leave. And consequently cease to obstruct our station. You're so busy, station. All right, um, let's see. I haven't introduced myself. My name is Kate Walker. Walker, Walker, haven't we already had a Miss Walker? 
Ethnology Masters, September 1953, if my memory serves me correctly. Perfectly well, my dear colleague. But if I may be so bold, it was a Mr. Walker and not a miss. It was Bill Walker, sat the June 68 exams. The impudent fool turned up for the oral assessment <laughs> in jeans. These guys talk a lot considering they're saying internal regulations which no explicitly state the required uniform for the occasion. Pure incitement. It was scandalous. Sadly, so we've seen worse since. Young people lack all respect of traditional values. Tradition, young lady. One must always uphold tradition. Okay. Um, let's ask about our mission. You see, I didn't actually intend to stop here, but the springs of my train gave up, you see? No, not you see? really. You, see? you mean to say you're not a student? No. You have arrived a little late in the term, Miss. Enrollment for this year has already terminated. But as rectors of this university, and therefore representatives of its highest authority, we could bend the rules a little, if you like. Okay. You don't understand. I'm a lawyer from New York. Or rather, Valadilene, more precisely. My client wants to buy out an old mechanical toy factory. They don't care about but this. But its heir isn't actually dead, and is living somewhere in Siberia. I've got to get to him to sign the sales contract. You see? Not really. This is a most peculiar tale. Tell me about it. A kerfuffle of the highest order. Indeed, a kerfuffle. We have an excellent law school, if you should ever change your mind. Okay, why are they willing to bend the rules about admitting me to the school, but not about my train? Can you possibly help me out here? Miss, your insistence is almost verging on indecency. What? We cannot constantly be at your disposal. We have many other requests to attend to. It if sure you don't seems mind, like it. could you I not disturb us here. all the time? Thank you. All the time? What do you mean I asked you once? Let's ask if they know Hans. It seems like they remember names pretty well. Does the name Hans Vorlberg mean anything to you by chance? Ah, one of the brightest, most idealistic intellects to have graced our university. Hans Vorlberg. I remember speaking to him once. I was still a student at the time. He just stared at me, lost in thought for a while. He scarcely ever said a word. But how can one forget him? Idealistic? I'll grant you that, but bright. Oh, don't go too far. He was completely incapable of passing any exams. All he ever did was to sit in on lessons, and not many of them either. Paleontology mainly. He had an unhealthy passion for mammoths, which matched the state of his intellect perfectly. That is to say, prehistoric. Oh, <laughs> prehistoric? How dare you? A little far-fetched, maybe. But he did have flashes of intellectual brilliance, comprehensible only to high-minded scholars who hold no score by appearances. My dear colleague, your hasty conclusions are somewhat cavalier. My assessment is wholly accurate. The boy was a little odd. You must concur if my father, who was rector of the university at the time, had not shown great indulgence towards him. Hans Vorlberg would have never attended this establishment. What about the bandstand, then? Is that the work of a deranged mind? Even after all these bandstand. years, you are still jealous of it. My dear colleagues, I beseech you. Let's show some decorum. We have a visitor. Uh, what do you want with Hans Vorlberg, miss? Uh, are you a member of his family? No, no, not at all. I'm looking for him to clear up an inheritance matter. Is he still here? What? Here? At the university? <laughs> no, not at all. He left a long time ago. Yes, a very long time ago. The very year I was nominated to this position, in fact. Almost 50 years ago already. Mm, okay. The poor soul moved on once he learned all he needed to know about mammoths. Ah, this establishment was never quite the same after his departure, it must be said. You mean to say it was never as bad? All that Oddball brought to this university was his misplaced fantasies! Why is he so passionately gentlemen, against Hans? Gentlemen, let's try to retain the calm and level-headedness that befits our position. Indeed. So Hans did come here to study mammoths. And he mentioned something about a bandstand, which I'm wondering if that's the thing outside that we saw with the little um, automatons at the top and the door that was jammed. 
I don't know. I'm not sure if that's what they mean by bandstand. Um, okay, uh, we already kind of asked them about the train, but let's see if there's more Excuse for them me. to tell us. Miss, we find ourselves terribly put out by the presence of your train in our I station know. and by its recurrent immobility. Recurrent immobility? Indeed, the situation is very regrettable. It's your recurrent, huge locomotive is very consistent. <laughs> Our train should first stop, then subsequently leave. That is the rule. I know, dude. All right, let's ask more about these birds. That idea of the station aviary is really very original. It's the pride of our university. One of the specialties taught here is zoology, you see, and more particularly, ornithology. Proper study and instruction should not be limited to books. Observation of living matter is indissociable from theoretical questions. It contains some very rare specimens that have been brought back from far away exotic countries, especially for our university, by the world's most intrepid explorers. Do you remember Alexander Valembois? And his peculiar bird? Absolutely. <laughs> These his guys are crazy. Some very embarrassing long-term like, consequences. Don't bother us. We're so busy, but A we'll talk for jealous, hours. Indeed. It must be said the situation could have been much worse. However. Oh yes, it could have been terribly problematic. They like using big words, like in the way where I feel like they just used a thesaurus. <laughs> All right, let's ask about the grapes. You wouldn't know if there is any forest sauvignon here in Barakstadt, would you? Absolutely. <clears throat> when he says absolutely, he means, of course, absolutely none. Hmm. What we mean, of course, is that we are absolutely positive there is no forest sauvignon here in Barakstadt. Really? Are you sure? Because I read in a book that Barakstadt possesses a number of plants, I wouldn't mind getting a hold of some, if possible. Out of the question, miss! The assistant rector means to say that our priority is for you to remove your train from our station. Your research will have to wait until your next stop. Hmm. Yes, that's right. Y your train must leave the station immediately, so please refrain from wasting our time in needless visitations. Don't forget the regulations, miss. Don't forget them. Trains should first stop. Then subsequently leave. You've said that already, and dude. All right, so they seem a little sketchy about the grapes, and they also seem very eager to get us to leave. Let's ask them if we could have some money then to give to those boaters. Some sailors have agreed to tow the train, but I don't have enough money to pay them. I was wondering if you could help me out for a while. I could work for the money. She works hard for the money. Uh, please wait, miss. We have certain confibulations to attend to. Confibulations. That is right. We must confibulate between ourselves. A collegiate decision must be taken. Okay. I hope that we are not indisposing you in any way. <clears throat> Why not? If it helps us get rid of that train. My word, that is a fine idea. <laughs> Why are they so what do you eager have in to mind, to leave? Hmm. When you arrived here, you must have noticed a splendid bandstand which honors the main university courtyard. Yes. A unique piece of By mechanical Hans. craftsmanship which no longer works, alas. Why, yes, we have very moving memories of its melodies. We're prepared to offer you a financial reward if you can set it working again. Awesome. With pleasure. What do I have to do? Unfortunately, my dear, time and rust have taken their toll on this university, and our automatons no longer have a spring in their step. <laughs> you are going to have to be resourceful. To tell you the truth, there are a number the of complex talks, mechanisms text here in is Barakstadt, <laughs> and it would appear that we have unfortunately lost their operating instructions. Your train, however, is an extremely ingenious invention, so you should be no stranger to complex mechanisms, should you? Uh, we are therefore counting on your ingenuity, miss. All right. I hope that I can show myself worthy of your faith in me, gentlemen. Well, my dear colleagues, one more university matter nicely tied up. Not yet. All right, so we know that we have to earn the money to get our, um... 
Train towed by the sailors who speak Russian, German, Italian. <laughs> and um, in order to earn that money, the scholars are willing to pay us if we fix the bandstand. So I'm going to end this video here, and in the next video we'll see if we can figure out, we'll explore the university a little more, which hopefully will give us a little bit of clue as to how to fix the bandstand. So stay tuned for that next video, and thanks for watching!